Uh, Eli Alexander here with us, I think. Are you there with us, Eli? I think I am. Can you hear me? I can. All right, good. Then I seem to be here. So we got, um, we're going to do, uh, Eli's got a whole bunch of questions that he's been uh, curating, he's gathering up, and we, uh, he's going to be doing some sculpting tonight, right? And some stunts. Yep. Right? No? Okay. Yeah. Sure, whatever. <laughs> it's tradition. And what? That's it's tradition. Doctor. A handstand? Tradition. It's a tradition, yes. It's no handstands. I could do some, like, I don't know, spinning hook kicks in the background or something. I mean, you had me at spinning hook kick. <laughs> uh, so before we, uh, before we start endangering ourselves, we're going to have a couple of updates. Um... I don't know what they are. What do we have? we have an uh, upcoming schedule. What do we have going on? Tomorrow we have a big old thing on the on the horizon. We got your game coming out. I I'm just finishing up a four by four build, which is going to be maybe a lot to try and cover in the three hours that we have. Um, it is going to be an ambitious and dangerous and crazy game. And uh, word on the street is Matt Lillard is is uh, going to be late to his 20th wedding anniversary so he can play D&D with us. <laughs> uh, that's just a rumor. Uh, that's true. Uh, <laughs> and we have, what do we have on Thursday? And then on Thursday we have a stream with a guest. I don't have my notes pulled up. I think that's... Uh, I know it's Crystal, Crystal Sully. Sully. It's Crystal that Sully, Crystal? Sully, that's right, yes. yes. Yeah. Monster Maker. Which is very exciting. And then Friday we have Toby... And along with Toby, we have the Conics on the stream. They are the they are the wizards behind this. Is it bleeding edge technology? I don't know. It's bleeding for us because we're like still Cut. using pencils and graph paper. Cutting paper. edge? What? Uh, cutting edge is the term, right? No, bleeding edge. It's even oh. the, the farther than uh, it's it's sharper than cutting edge. We're like the uh, the next level. Uh, like it's like vorpal. <laughs> it's a vorpal blade of of uh, technology. Addressable LEDs, so you can control every aspect of it. Anyway, they'll be here on Friday. We'll be showing off. We'll be deconstructing the light puck and showing how it works, uh, which will be very exciting. And Saturday, we have a special guest on as well. Is that is that your sign That's for me him? Being Joe Manganiello. <laughs> We're going to have Joe Manganiello <laughs> on. He's like, you know, Eli has like an eight pack, but Joe Manganiello has like an 18 pack. <laughs> These are facts, all of them. Is that a full keg or? Yeah, and then uh, Sunday we have Russ from Sunday. Sunday we have Russ, yes. And that one, instead of being at the normal 7 p.m., we have that at 1 p.m. Because he's British, like Rabbit Burner and Finley. And uh, so we'll be at 1 in the afternoon. And I wore Eli's my whale's t shirt for Rabbit Burner. Woo! <laughs> nice. And then uh, Monday is of uh, is dueling, battling painters, right? Yes. You, Aaron versus Hamster. Well, they're they're working together. A brush with death. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, that's, yeah, that's the name of that one. <laughs> Put it down. A brush with death. Yeah. Dueling wands. Um, yeah, they're gonna because we had to cancel one of the streams. We're gonna uh, have the stream that Aaron was gonna do mixed over with Hamster as well. To get double. both out. Yeah. And I guess whoever paints the best and kills the fastest wins, because this is life. a competition. And then we have another double header on Tuesday. And then Tuesday we have a double double header. The beginning of the day, we're gonna have you doing a little build stream around 1 p.m. Well, I had so much fun on Sunday when we just did. I don't know. It was like no agenda. It was just like let's build some stuff, and people were just asking to build stuff, and just spent I don't know a long too long <laughs> building uh, way stuff. Long. Head off. Way it was long awesome. Than, way long so we're gonna do it again. To. Yeah. And I think Toby's going to join me, and I think we're just going to start building as big as we can. I'm going to tell people, we'll give us assignments. Be like, hey, you make a thing there, you make a thing there, we're going to get compatibility. We're gonna, it's a free-for-all. It's just going to be a, it's madness. I wish you were here, Eli, in person. You could be. Oh, I know. Yeah. 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 Uh, and then, I then, don't get to play with this stuff for another year. <laughs> no. Well, maybe sooner than that if, I don't know. Yeah, well. Yeah. yeah. We'll see. Uh, and then that night, Stefan is running a, a star-studded uh, AD and D game, old school, uh, old school D and D, with uh, Luke Gygax and who else is in there? Peter Atkinson and David Baxter and 
should be a lively uh, way to finish up. And then we finish the next day and go to sleep. Woo! Yes, <clears throat> and then it's a celebration. We only have eight more days, I think it is. Yeah, so... Yeah, next Wednesday. We're we coming end. to the, the finale. Yeah, which is good because I've been told I look haggard, so <laughs> we got any more days to go. So let's see what we can do. Uh, other things coming up, we, we shot... We shot 10 hands-on videos at this point. First one went out today, Majestic Waterfalls. Uh, let us know if you want any more. We're going to do pickups on Thursday, last batch of them. So we have we have banks, escarpments, uh, waterfalls, which we already got out there, uh, forest compatibility, swamp compatibility, mountains compatibility, uh, drift stones. We did a general overview. Uh... I don't know, trifectas. I don't know what else we did. Many more. Yeah, so let us know. And we're going to do one for the Fogger and for the Dwarven Light Puck. Um, but let us know if there's any other video materials that would help you understand what the heck all this stuff is. Someone suggested walkthroughs of the Explorer Pledges, which would be a good idea, too. Um, and then, I don't think, do we have any other news from within? Uh, not that I can think of. It feels like a year that I've, it's been since I wrote the update, so. Yeah. Well, but updates from without. Uh, we have a package from our friends at Eldritch Foundry here. Ooh, who, before uh, we open this, should we get Toby in here? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. See, that's, see, I knew there was something else to remember. Toby! Hi, I've been summoned. Uh, Eli. Can you give Toby oh, he's a muted. challenge? Give Some... him a challenge. Uh, what sort of a challenge? Like Physical 20 challenge. paces with black powder pistols or like... Here, I'm going to give you to him. Um, Hold on. Oh. <laughs> something to build. Build something with Here. Wildlands. Yeah, I'll try to do it. Oh, okay. Um, build uh, the perfect ambush point. Ooh. Hmm. Okay. For and a Wailuli attack. Yeah. The perfect. I want to try to do it on a twelve by twelve, like I always did the speed build. So yeah, I have something in mind. Cool. Done. Cool. I don't That's even know quick. what it is. Yeah. It's the. No, 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 no. Oh, these okay. I'm gonna guess. Right. I'm gonna guess what the challenge is when it comes in. Yeah. Because I couldn't, I couldn't hear any of that. So I don't have him. So I have no idea what it is. So when it comes in, I'll try and guess what you you challenged him to. It'll be fun. All right. <clears throat> uh. So then, so okay, Eldritch Foundry. So they they did uh, they did some custom minis for the game tomorrow, which is uh, hamsters painting right now, and then they sent us uh, some samples of these, which I'm really excited. I opened one, and then oh this one already is open, but I didn't open this room. Uh, and then I was like, oh, I got to open the rest of these on the air because it's most exciting. It's very cool. So check this out. This boggles my mind. It's it's. I said this is like classic DF. It's something that you c completely don't need. It's completely unnecessary, but it's like so awesome that I always want it. So can you get in super? Okay. We should. Is that light on? Hey, fire on that light. You can see they're like transition purple. So, so she's got a uh, got a flail here, right? But it's check this out. it's dynamic. It's a moving. It's a it's a chain. So it swings. <laughs> can you see that Eli? Where's Eli's camera? Right here. No, I'm oh, not even. I can see like your left yeah. shoulder. Look at that, like, uh, oh, wow. it's a swingy, dangly, uh, yeah, multi- What is that made out of? It's 3D is printed. Is that just really flexible? 3D What's printed. That? Uh, 3D printed. Just a really flexible filament. That, huh. Toby, cool. Toby thinks that it's, uh, they do this kind of this two, it's, like, uses two materials and one dissolves. Um, and so then you're left with, uh, wow, well, look at that. It's either that or powder-based. Or powder-based. Yeah. But there's like, look at this guy. This guy's got a pair of nunchaku. Would you mind uh, showing these on the white paper? Oh, yeah. Good idea. <laughs> He's got this dude in a top hat with a pair of nunchucks. It's like two pair. I guess that's two pair, right? Because the one is a pair. And then, yeah. Here was the, uh, the flail. Look at that. It's so ridiculous. I love it. It's like... How, it's it's definitely uh, it's definitely some dark witchcraft. Whoa! Look at this guy. Ooh, he's got like a Gasari Gama. What's that? Or a uh, 
comma, right? It's, you see the, man, we need a, a, a uh, longer lens. He's got like a, uh, yeah. Is that a Kasari gama? Like a, it's a, a sickle with a chain with oh. a handle. Yeah, that's Kasari gama. Yeah. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> the, oh, look at this. This is like a massive flail. Ho, 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 ho. You see the thing? That is no joke. That's awesome. Wow. This guy means business. Oh, it's an orc, too, with a backpack and a hatchet. This guy is awesome. You see that, Eli? Look how big that thing is. It's like a, just a a massive... Uh, oh, wow. Yeah. Like the uh, Lord of the Nazgul in the Lord of the Rings movie. Yes. That crazy thing he had. <laughs> yep. Yeah. This is That's definitely a cleric, an orc cleric that means business. And then our last one is... <laughs> the double flail. Can you see the? Uh... I'll hold this up. Okay, here. Okay, get it. It's just fine. This guy is awesome. He's got a braided beard. Yeah, we should definitely have had a longer lens. I didn't realize. I wasn't thinking. Yeah. Yeah, surprise attack. Um, wow, so Eldritch Foundry is they're they're pushing the uh, pushing the envelope on three D printing. Doing some cool. This guy is awesome. Is he, he's like got a Norse helm, a braided beard, a padded gamison. This double foil. Wow, these are cool. So excited to see uh, what else these guys are up to. Ooh. All right, so then, do we have any other, oh, we got another new thing while we're in the tight lens world here. Hold on. Oh. We've got this hot off the presses. Uh, Michelle just finished this. Uh, so we, so this is the, this is the flaming skull. So we had, um, we had, we had an initial sculpt that she did that the skull was just way too big. Because trying to get a skull big enough to fit a LED in it um, and fire was it just, it just looked silly. So then Nina sculpted one and it was too small. It was like perfectly anatomically correct and like, but it was just like, you couldn't get the LED and the fire in there. It was like too small. So then Michelle did one now that has three skulls and a thing and you can see it up. You see the, uh, Ooh. Yeah, little fiery skulls. It's very Warhammer. Yeah. Right, cause skulls everywhere. It's good. It would look particularly cool on a cavern's deep wall or something. All right, so I think that's uh, all of our homework, right? Or our news, new that news. That is what I have, yep. Um, yeah, so uh, let's uh, let's get Eli in. Eli. <laughs> so Eli, what's uh, what's on your agenda, sir? This is the floor is uh, yours. Well, um, figured I'd start out by just um, answering some questions uh, that I've collected from the comment section and Discord and whatnot. Um, stuff uh, asked people to send stuff in, um, and anyone out there, if you have other questions, um, put them in the chat and. I think Mace or Chris will take note, and we'll try and get to those as well. Yes. Um, but um, I'll start with what I've got here. So, um, <clears throat> um, and one one good one that uh, Sten Fisker. Oh, asked, I love that guy. Um, or gal. Yeah, he's person. great. Um, yeah. Or gal, whoever it may be. Um, whoever they are, they ask good questions. Um, and uh, Sten Fisker wanted to know um, just about the kind of the design thinking behind the new escarpments and trifecta ledges yeah. why they are the way they are um specifically i think they mentioned that they're uh, a bit different from the trifectas that were in caverns deep in that um they have kind of the undercut on the bottom of the of the 
escarpment. And um, but this was a real design challenge. Like this was. Yeah, it was. Um, I was like, okay, spent a you... lot of time on that. Yeah. I'm like, Eli, this is. Uh, I don't think this will work. And you're like, ah, let me tinker. And you. Uh... Yeah. 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 We we spent a lot of time kind of get... going round and round on the best way to handle this. And, let me get um, some to look at while you talk about it. Sure. Yeah. So essentially, the trick was this. We needed it to work with both forest and mountain pieces. Um, we needed it to look good on its own. Um, and particularly when it was along um, as, a, as a border to negative space. So if there was a river or a lake alongside it. Um, and we also needed it to work with our existing escarpments uh, when you had the ledges in place, which would make it more or less the same as the existing uh, escarpments because they have the attached floor. Eli. And so we're just... It sounds like you're being uh, under attack. Who attacked Uh Yeah, there's probably chicken sounds in the background, and I apologize for that. My <laughs> wife is about to... Uh, the chickens at this time every day uh, are, come up on the, the porch and demand their dinner in no uncertain terms. Oh, so. I'm the same way. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um... So anyways, yeah, sorry about that, folks. Uh, I, I live up in the North Woods in Vermont, and we have uh, pet chickens, and they're, uh, we don't have wolves at the door, but we do have chickens at the door. So anyhow, um, they're, Eva's feeding them now, so they'll probably be quiet henceforth. Anyway, so back to the escarpments. So um, <clears throat> yeah, so uh, how to make them so they look good in all the different variations and were as versatile as possible. So. Um, if we if we did um, if we had made them such that they just kind of sloped gradually down to the ground, kind of carried the, the main cliff face straight down, um, it would be very hard to make good-looking ledges to go with that, especially the forest ledges. Um, if you look at um, Mace, were you able to grab a set of the Caverns Deep uh, trifecta pieces? Just a pair of those. I think I got so a trifecta out yeah i could so still grab just want to kind of show it. how those fit together um in a nutshell they fit together such that they're you know the freestanding walls that are part of the trifecta um are a little wider at the base which makes them stand up really nicely um and then the ledges fit against them and kind of overlap that slight outward slope at the base and then typically when you use those ledges um, you might flip them over if they're on, say, the water's edge or something, so you have a bit of a, a slope uh, well, down it, to the water. It also gives you more organic, like more options. They can be more organic because yeah. you can go both sides. Exactly. Those those ones are great because you can go both ways with them. The trick with doing um, forest ones specifically is there is really no way to make them two sided. Plants respond to gravity; they go up or down. And they also have a bit more texture, so if we had done plants on one side that was going to be a bottom, they would have to be super flat and basically pretty ugly. And then one side or the other just would not look right. Well, the cavern you're was looking at flat. Like the caverns are, these are like completely, utterly flat. Yeah. So it's it uh, easy to do that. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we just, we just couldn't do that, practically speaking, with, with a forest bank. Um, so, well, also, I mean, unless it, it would had look... only moss on it, and that just wouldn't work with our all the other forest floors, which have a great deal of detail and many species of plants and so on. Well, also inverted, like the inverted on the the caverns looks okay because it's it's stone and it can kind of yeah. have a weird overhang. But like inverted with the plants, like with yeah, lo- plants just respond weird. to gravity. Yeah. They don't they don't grow backwards upside down. Yeah. So that would it would just be wrong. Um, and then the other thing, which was kind of a, a side benefit, is if you, I don't know if like I, I've been canoeing down uh, rivers where there's like limestone cliffs and banks along the sides, and there actually is kind of an, an undercut where the water ha- over you know centuries has actually worn away the limestone a bit. So there's a bit of that kind of back cut underneath. So, um, and, and obviously, if we're using these without the ledges, then they're going to be typically along negative space build, which very often is going to be a river, a pond, a, a lava pool, whatever the case may be. But even, um, so even that on, actually like, was a really nice, you know, kind of a nice detail. 
and um, even on the and, on like a, if you put it on a forest floor, it still looks cool. Like a little undercut doesn't look. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It just makes it look sort of even more like it's bulgy out and precarious and stuff. I don't know. I was really happy. Absolutely. With well, and and if um, I mean, if you look at any ledge, just if you're out hiking in the woods, um, they're not. You know, I mean, often there'll be a, a regular slope, but more often there'll be an irregular. You know, mix of undercuts and and, and you know out thrust bits and cracks and so forth so um we tried to make it you know as as irregular as was feasible while still working nicely with the ledges and um, the ledges and wanted to way. work the ledges wanted to work really nicely on their own too right exactly. we didn't want yeah. them to just yeah. be a thing you use as a compatibility piece we wanted them to be a neat negative space pieces so they really needed to work and have some depth and you know play nice yeah odds are they'll probably get used more for for the negative space aspect i would guess um mm -hmm. a lot of people may get them just you know packs of them Honest, without the escarpments involved. honestly i'm i almost always build the escarpments uh on top and just go up and don't do them in line but you know what i do actually have been doing a lot is i've been doing them if uh if i'm doing like a swamp build it's really nice to take the escarpment use the ledge and then put like some swamp banks around it. So it's like the escarpment goes down and there's a little bit of swamp bank and then it goes off into the water mm -hmm. and then some parts of it right into the water. It's like a neat look. That's a good, that's a good question. Yeah, like there's some accumulated silt around the base. Yeah. Of it. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a neat gag. Uh, so um, hopefully that answers that question. Let's um, pause, pause there because Toby has, uh, has something to show. I'm assuming it's a speed loop. It's a... Uh, I can't wait to guess what this is to me. I should have gotten another <clears throat> headphones table. for. Oh. Um, I might be able to find some. We have there. the octopus. Don't we? All right. Yeah. So it's a. Hold on. I have to move a tree. Huh. Hold on. I'm, I'm using the things in line here. Ah. So you just mentioned that you don't use, like. This is a good sample of it. So here, but can you see? I'm guessing this was. Let's see. Uh, a what's oh, an ambush? Yeah, it's yeah. a perfect way to leave ambush point. Yeah. Choke point ambush. Here, move this one for a sec. Just so you yeah. can see the uh, nice. This little narrowed area. Then come down from the sides. We should put this guy. Yeah. This guy in the ground because he's the fit. And then they got rain archers up here. Some of these guys. And you can totally be hiding behind the thing. Yeah. yeah. Look at the ambush. Rabbit burner says, "Give that man a beer." So Toby, if you want a beer, oh, I'll go get one you are now entitled to one. Give me a shirt that says Wales. Wales. Uh, <laughs> Eli's wearing his Wales shirt for Rabbit Burn. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. Love it. I, I want to have a fight here right now. All right. So the oh, and they came out yeah, of the cave here. Yeah. Can you see the little? Uh, it's a nice touch, Toby. Oh, this is too heavy to move with the uh, <laughs> the polystone. See the cave. Right there. Woo. All right, so now the backers. Toby wants a backer build challenge, right? You still have for yeah. another one? Yeah. Yeah. Backer build challenge. What should Toby build in a 12 by 12 with Wildlands pieces? Rabbit Burner says, death from above. Chthonian Sun says, sacrificial spire. Sacrificial spire. Sacrifice Toby. <laughs> you know what's neat about this, Toby, is this is like, I always say like, well, outdoor encounters want to be like 12 by 12, but like this is like a, this you could, you could run an encounter on this, on, I mean, I'm sorry, they want to be like two, 24 by 24, but you could like run a one foot, like you could run a little encounter here. Well, yeah, just like a combat. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. Yeah. As long as the players don't try to run. Awesome. Yeah, the one that got out of here is the yeah. next one. 
Do you want to do Sacrificial Spire? That sounds fun, yeah. All right. What will Toby sacrifice? Me. Himself. Knight of the Phoenix says Smurf Murder Canyon, so... Smurf Murder Canyon. I think this was... Yeah, it covers both. This was from... Smurf Murder. The price point on that. Um... 250. I'm guessing with the escarpments. It's both. It's escarpments, banks, and uh, forest floors. So that does bank it up. Fifty. Maybe less. Maybe it's one. Two hundred. Two hundred fifty plus the trees. Yeah, it's about two fifty. That's my guess. Tyler could look at it and and melt it down mentally as a spreadsheet and turn it into. Uh, yeah, and tell you the skews. Do we have any slack on Eli? Ooh, maybe he can hear. What? Well, I'm getting, uh, trying to bring your little camera over so you can be part of uh, all the fun. Oh, cool. <coughs> yeah. Oh, we got more. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Oh, that's it. That's it. Okay. So, what, uh, what's next? Uh, what, uh, what do you have for us next? Okay. Um, next question I have from uh, Justin, who is just looking for advice on sculpting at the scale. Said Ooh. he's interested in uh, giving it a try, you know, and, and um, wanted to know what a what a sculptor would suggest. Um, so, um, I mean, the biggest thing I can say is just, you know, practice is great. Like, be be bold. Pick something you think would be fun to do. Pick something you feel like you could take a reasonable stab at to start. So, don't try and sculpt the Sistine Chapel first thing. Try and sculpt a uh, stalagmite or a coral formation or a, a miniature Sistine Chapel. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, if you, if although if that's what really speaks to you, go for it. You know, maybe the first one won't be perfect, but give it a try. Just do something that you're excited about. What medium um, would you recommend? I would. Start in? I would definitely recommend uh, a polymer clay rather than uh, the epoxies like green stuff and so on. Those are tricky to get the hang of, and it's better to develop your technique first before you're on a clock of trying to finish epoxy before it's done. What about um, something super sculpey, that, yeah, you can harden, right? The super sculpey is great, yeah. yeah. So that's something if you want to make a piece and then put it in the oven and harden it and you don't have to worry about molding or anything, uh, you can you can paint, you know, the original. Um, that's a great thing. That's, that's kind mm -hmm. of what I got started with, actually. Um, you don't need that's to spend a lot on tools. You can use um, a few needles, a few knitting needles. You can pick up, like, uh, these sort of, like, dental tool looking things um, there's a pack of those like clay sculpting tools for like six or seven bucks um, online just about anywhere um, and I still do a lot of my work with that sort of stuff so you don't need fancy tools um, experiment with things and you know find what you like but um, uh, just in terms of like developing your technique my biggest advice is learn to be gentle with the medium hmm. a lot of people when they start out um, try to kind of force it into shapes and they, it ends up getting kind of scratchy and you get little sort of shreds of clay and you need to, you need to learn to be gentle with it and to kind of coax it where you want it to go. Um, well, take also you can bend it out of shape, shape, right? If, you, if you're pushing, if you're using too much oh, yeah. force, you get yeah. the whole thing, you know, you realize the rest of your piece is kind of drifting if you're pushing it all yeah. out there. Yeah, yeah. Um, you, can, you can definitely warp things and um, Here's a good a good just exercise. Take something with a, a hard square edge, you know, some sort of tool um, with that sort of edge, and try and sculpt a sphere. Try and do a nice round sphere. You're mean. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but um, e even if it doesn't come out perfect, that that's gonna give you a sense of the you know the control. Um, so that's a good exercise. Uh, but yeah, start out start out. I would say with like super sculpty. You know, it's it's forgiving to work with, but you can also bake it and keep it, and you know, so you don't need to worry about molding. And um, maybe start on something that's a little bit bigger than a human figure. You know, start on a piece of landscape, um, something that doesn't have really fine parts, um, and uh, yeah, go from there. See see what moves you, see what you have fun with. You know, um, Passion enjoying it is mm -hmm. really important. Yeah. If, if you're not having fun, then don't do it. Holy but moly. if you find oh, you yeah, really do enjoy it, then... Got a piece from over there. there. You're off to the races. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Um, 
Woo. Okay, I've got another one. Uh, if Can I do another one? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Uh, Dockman Dave says, is it, po- is it possible to save the Gloom Gorger? Um, <laughs> this was, I guess that appeared on... We, can, uh, we should start a Kickstarter other, to a, a GoFundMe. Yeah. <laughs> save. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this is just... Um, it, this is, was just a direct response to my uh, my request for questions. So, um, obviously, that's not something I Wait, can answer. Um, I, I showed the Gloom Gorger uh, last night. Yeah, I showed yeah, the Gloom Gorger last night. I don't know how it came up, um, but it was it's, the problem was it was sort of a spiraling issue of it, the JST. Basically, the JST socket piece was kind of the problem, which then spiraled into that. That became a casualty of the JST. Um, and yeah, so we'll we will see. Um, and then we were having trouble. We wanted the light to come out a couple of places on it, and it wasn't possible. And, but a uh, Gloom Gorger is it's kind of an adorable, creepy fungus. It's like, you know, yeah, it's I mean, I think it's cool without a light in it. I mean, yeah, I'd, I'd put them in my build definitely. I thought they were pretty yeah. nifty. Um, They're cool. I mean, the one thing that is good about that is it's something that could potentially come back in a future thing we don't have to be a giant wildlands kickstarter to maybe put a few creepy plants on a jst teardrop somewhere well um, we we have a lot i mean we have a lot of sculpts on this one that aren't uh aren't in it i mean you yeah, yeah. you sculpted a bunch <laughs> of ruins pieces that are uh that are sitting in the freezer and uh yeah there's some yeah. there's michelle sculpted a bunch of ruins stuff that are sitting there we have we have a we have a little stockpile of stuff, so we'll we'll see. Maybe we can sneak a couple things into the pledge manager, and some of them we wait till next year or the year after, like that necro drawbridge. We always talk about that. It was three yeah. years <laughs> later it cut out. When, you know. Yeah, or you know, I think there are still some walls. I know there are still some walls that I did for the first city builder that are you know sculpted walls in a new style. That are still sitting at the studio. I saw them last time I was down there. Really? Maybe I shouldn't even mention that, but, yeah. <laughs> but they are. Yeah. Yeah, they're I still remember. There. They're like which I did in KS3. Yeah. Because um, we were originally going to have like six different styles of walls or something, and then we we're like, oh no, that's insane. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, the, I did. Um, that quickly went down like to brick like ones three and, and then sort then. of like Roman ones that had kind of like a wainscot and like stucco, but were quite different from the beam ones and. Yeah. So there's there's yeah there's all stuff that goes way back. Remember the tiny um, brick ones. Yeah. yeah. Huh. But anyhow, so yeah, there's a huge back catalog. I've done stuff. Michelle's done stuff. Nina's done stuff. Drew's done stuff. Uh, yeah. You know, I'm sure Todd's there's other things stuff, else. We got like, stuff. Yeah. 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 It's a good question. Um, but yeah, that's the Gloom Gorger would be a fun one to fit in somewhere because it it doesn't require a lot of support. Like it could no. just be a thing on its own that just stands there and looks cool. Yep. Yeah. So. Yeah, um, okay. Little... So that was that. Um, I'll I'll just keep going until you stop me, and then you know. Um, here's one from the Discord. Ilion says, yeah. um, "How are the challenges different between uh, making like bread and butter type pieces, like the original floors, walls, and corners, versus new, like bigger, more organic shapes? Um, just you know, what's different about the the challenge of that?" Um, a good question uh yeah it's a good question um i mean they definitely are different um for the this if we're doing a, a really compact simple set which we probably won't be doing a whole lot more of simply because we've kind of covered that ground the basic kind of lego block kind of pieces but um you have to kind of pack a lot into a little because you have something that's going to be repeated a lot of times um, you need to be really careful on just kind of the basic engineering of it because, yep. you know, if something's a little off on that two inches, that multiplies over many things. You have to have something that's going to look good in multiples, generally speaking. Generic, um, generic need, but cool. Yeah. Like it needs to be. Yeah, generic but cool. You yeah, can repeat it a whole our, bunch. Our catchphrase for, yeah. for those kind of things. Yeah. Like the, um, the pillar dungeons, for example. Yep. Like we're like, how can we take a dungeon and make it cool but still something you'll see a pile of and think all right that's a long wall that still looks good yeah um and um increasingly what we've wanted to do as much as we can is do stuff where every bit feels totally unique and special particularly if you're out in the forest you don't see the same tree in a row but that has the same 
that's mm. the same challenge of generic but cool, right? You want it organic, yes. but you need to be able to repeat. Yeah. Like I want to be able to put the same six by six forest tile next to itself, so it needs to be. Yeah. Yeah, that's a hard. Like I feel like yeah. that's an even harder and challenge. Definitely. Something so yeah, it, it very much is something. So when you you put them together, they don't look the same. So if you rotate it ninety degrees, there's things about it that make it feel different. Um, that's actually something back when. I, before I was a sculptor, I was a carpenter was my primary job, and I used to tile floors. And you get tiles with, you know, they're a pattern on them that looks like natural stone, but it's actually but it's not. It's like a repeated pattern. They have like six and patterns. Those, there's like, right, yeah, there's like six different tiles, and you got to do a 20-foot room. And trying to find the best way to rotate them and shift them and mix them up, so <laughs> it, it all lo it looked like it was natural and they're all different. And I nobody else would it. do that, Eli. Like you, yeah. most <laughs> most guys that are on the floor would just like lay them all down. And whoever they took them out of the box, but you were like artfully yeah. like arranging it ninety degrees so it'd be too different and like spreading the. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. Of course. I, every time I did a floor, I would do that, and yeah. but they did look a lot better, and yeah. and also that. I think just kind of got into my brain for like, okay, if you're doing a forest, how do you do it? So if you put these two corners together, then those two plants plus these three plants make five plants. That feels different than a clump of two or a clump of three that's somewhere else, yep. that kind of thing. So yeah, we definitely think about that. So that's the other side of it, like, you know, complexity that still feels not repeated. Well, it's that um, modularity and beauty, yeah. mod modulu, what is it? M mutilarity. Mutilarity, yep. yeah. Like... Mutilarity. <laughs> yeah. Um, what else is, I mean, definitely um, anything where you're dealing with organic forms is just a, you know, a different kind of chat. You have to, you have to get the feel for every single thing you're sculpting. So if you're sculpting a wild ginger plant, you need to know how that's supposed to look. And if you're doing rocks, you have to have a sense of how, I mean, there you're often up against, um, as opposed to say, dungeon where it's natural for everything to look very ordered. Um, if you're doing something that's truly natural, um, but you still have to obey rules of geometry so it fits together in a modular way, yeah. you have to figure out how to take those natural forms and make them fit together according to the rules of a two by two or four by whatever grid, um, but still not look forced and not look just like square rocks, you know. Um, and so, I mean, one thing that we definitely hit on was using limestone which tends to to break in you know horizontal layers and and squarish shapes feel natural there and you will see that in the in actual limestone formations um so you could you could have flat places where minis could actually stand yeah. and yet it, it doesn't look like someone just stuck a brick there and put you know oh, and you can on stack it. a bunch of them and have it yeah and them. you can and you can make them stackable and yeah so you can work in multiple yeah. dimensions all that um, I mean, there's, you know, there's lots of, I could go on and on about this, but I think those are probably the biggest things. Um, yeah, sometimes for the more organic things, also some of the, the weird interactions, like this is something you spend a ton of time thinking about, Nate, the geometry, like if it's not just edge to edge, you know, on a grid, but like, what if you take this piece and twist it, put it next to that piece, and you want a stone bridge that, cool. you know, and this thing sits on that thing. Yeah, figuring out oh, how weird organic shapes that can fit together in a bunch of nice ways, you know, while yeah. still feeling organic and yeah, yeah. And I mean, that's really fun. I mean, that's a really fun challenge. It's a lot more interesting than just like, all right, I'll get out my square and my ninety degree, you know, my little perfect jigs to make sure everything fits, and check the walls fifteen times as I'm sculpting the bricks. So you yeah. know, uh, you know, that's that's just part of doing. Well, trying to break it. Breaking organic things into geomet into modular pieces is a fun thing, and then yeah. then you have to find the logic of like, well, how yeah. do I justify there's this hard ninety degree like cut on this rock, like where, you know? Yeah, so, yeah. Justifying the piece is kind of a whole stage of how I think about sculpting an, an organic piece. Is like, yeah. I want to take it and and fulfill the functions it needs to fulfill, and yet make it look like something you might find on a hillside and uh, make it look cool yeah and you do all right speaking of looking cool oh. we got uh toby is here with another bill i'll need another hand One oh my minute. goodness this is oh Actually, my we just turn the camera? yeah uh, <laughs> 
Yeah, I. Uh, Let's try and slide. Okay, wait. It's so heavy we can't move it. <laughs> it is a mountain. Grab the. Yeah. The, yeah. the wyvernium might actually be heavier than dwarvenite. Clearly, it's the heaviest. <laughs> wow. So that is a sacrificial pit. And a, can you see that, Eli? Wait. No, I'm actually just looking at your torsos. Oh, nice. Was, yeah, that's cool. How do you throw them off here? Yeah. Oh, and this drift stone is hovering with a point up. Yeah, that uh, is. Right. Oh, that is awesome. You don't have so probably like the barbarians have a contest there, to see if you can impale your victim on the hovering one, or if you miss and you only get five points if yeah. you impale them on the one on the ground. I don't think <laughs> they can count that high though. It's either you get a point or you die. I think there's a, All right. It's just a simple. You get a turkey level. leg or no turkey leg. Yeah. Turkey leg or death. <laughs> Can we also get a rough price on this one? Uh, it's one driftstone pack. One whatever. Not even. It's just one of these. So it's one driftstone pack. It's like one straight escarpments, one concave escar. Two. Uh, I don't yeah, know. There's two concaves essentially. I mean, those things are almost. There's what. 50 bucks a piece or something. Yeah, or something. This one's probably three or four. Two, 250, something, That's I don't know. It's much more dense than the other one, so. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what the Driftstone pack costs, but it's basically, it's one, we got two larges, I two mediums, four stone. So it's a weird mat, yeah. yeah. Cool. What a sacrificial pit. Ah. <laughs> Is it work? Nice. Cool. Thank. That was a good idea, whoever that was. Yeah, that was fun. I'll take a photo. Oh. I'll just take a picture. Now. Yeah, take a picture for Discord. All right, what next on your uh, your litany? We should figure out at some point. You're going to do some sculpting too. Show a new thing. So we should. Sure. Um, yeah. Um, okay. Well, um, we have a question from Ezed. Talk about the one that got away. We did that a little bit already. I think kind of talking about pieces that. There's a bunch um, that have gotten away. Yeah, I mean, maybe my favorite that hasn't come out, I would love to see that, um, the Fire Elemental Myrmidon appear at some point. That was kind of the stretch goal from uh, Hellscape that didn't... The stretch goal that didn't stretch, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, we all have things. I mean, I'm sure I'm sure Michelle has just a giant list. From, she, did, she did a lot of fun stuff uh, for, for this one that I'm sure we'll see relatively soon. But you know, uh, but yeah, for me that's the one that popped in my mind. Um, yeah. But also, yeah, there's the gloom gorger. There's you know other stuff. Um, oh, a quick one from Rabbit Burner. Uh, he was just asking about um, watching you on the streams with the horizontal rods and saying you were like twisting them in, but we wouldn't be able to do that if they're square. But of course, this is going into polystone. Yeah, so this like, is probably yeah, I'm trying to force a. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm trying to like. We have a slight like. Yeah, they're just it's prototypes. The uh, yeah. our factory and our I mean I yeah 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 I figured that was pretty much the you know but oh yeah anyways, I was using so, yeah, pliers and things any, like it was anything you yeah. see that looks awkward generally speaking with any of this stuff it's because this is not the final product it's yeah. because it's polystone yes. uh, it's you know there's sticky tack and you know pixie dust and whatever in the background you know holding things together we've always kind um, of you know we always have to cobble together the prototypes a little bit um but we you know we we don't offer something that we know we can't pull off and we have our factory partners are fantastic at getting the tooling precise and having you know those the rods will slide in and be they'll be snug but you'll be able to get them out um it's also easier with the the square is is easier to hold on grip, and they're a little thicker. They're three mm -hmm. and stuff. So we're those are going to be. They will work just fine. We also we talk about scaling a lot and how the prototypes are different and stuff like that. And I'm wondering if it's almost worth having like something in the bottom of like Twitch or like whenever we post a photo of it that it says prototypes, not final, because I mean like I I, I think people. Yeah who know our product can trust that we're going to perfect it before the end. But then a lot of people will say like, why does it look like a different size than Caverns Deep and stuff like that? And I, yeah. Why is the color weird? Why is the whatever or something? Yeah, yeah it's true. Like we are, we're just showing yeah. <clears throat> prototypes in the raw. Like this is, you know, professional artists do not attempt yeah. at home. Yeah. And that's the, that's what's, <laughs> that's what's kind of amazing is 
that our you know that our backers have the faith and we're like okay you know there's some of these things that are a little rough right now but we know you guys will polish them up before you get it out there and we do yeah i mean we do have a pretty good track record at this point of many years of you know taking the time to make sure it's as it should be yeah yeah we do have a question in the chat about the mm. insert specifically uh, for you, Eli, I think, because, I mean, you're the one helping sculpt it. From ProMind, uh, how do you hide the squares and little inserts so they look so seamless with the kind of builds and, uh, like, the pieces? Uh, well, um, especially the, the square uh, holes for the horizontal pegs, um, those are probably the trickiest ones. But... Um, our stone formations do have a lot of big fault lines in them where things are splitting along the strata of the limestone or just big uh, vertical cracks from shifting ground, what have you. Um, and I've definitely made a point of putting the holes at fault line points and also generally any face that's got one of those holes, I probably put some other holes in it just to you know, kind of emphasize the, the crumbly nature of it. So you don't just see the one, you see other cracks and holes there. You also, um, I feel like you like to put a uh, little kind of overhangs over the mm. two and stuff to kind of disguise, you know, disguise it a little bit yeah. from view so you can't quite yeah, see that it's a square. Like Sometimes, yeah, a bit, yeah. bit of an overhang or like there's a bit that goes in a little bit next to it. So it's like a multi-layer thing where a few different yep. pieces fell out. Yeah. That kind of thing. Um, you know, they can't be completely hidden, of course, but we, we certainly do our best. And the verticals, um, often they're nestled among some big spires of the, you know, the wyver stone. So unless you're like staring at it straight down from above, um, you, you don't see it. And even then, you know, it could just be a hole somewhere in the formation. Um, do so, we have yeah, I the think verticals are pretty well hidden. Do we have one of the yeah, pieces? Yeah, I feel like they're the really hard to see. Cause Cause I could... Almost no one is staring straight down on the build and you pretty much won't see them aside from that. Let me do one that's um, dark. Uh, this is a pretty good example. All right. So this, you can see here. So let me get a pointy thing. Uh, oh yeah, shut up, please. Yeah. Um. So you can sort of see, you can see in there, that's a, there's a square hole oops, hidden in there. And actually this backwards and upside down. It's, it goes, it's right, it's right in there. It's pretty well hidden in the, uh, in the stone formation. Oh, ProMind is watching. I can't actually see that one. Yeah, well, it's so yeah. well hidden. Either. <laughs> you know, yeah. you know. No, I mean, I can't here's, see the I, formation. <laughs> and here's like, there's one hidden right there. Yeah. Kind of hidden in the... Yeah. No, they're, they're like, they're pretty neat. Uh, they're pretty well concealed. And then the verticals... Uh, well, this is a pretty good So this one has... This one has a vertical port in... Uh, in my mouth. Whoa! Okay. All as well. <laughs> it shook the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> was uh, that a lightning strike? What was that? Uh, it was Mace taking out the equipment. Wrath of God and all uh, that. So there's a there's a <laughs> vertical port hidden in between all these rocks there. It's pretty well uh, hidden too. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, we 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 care about the details, right? We really we want to yeah you know we want to do our best to hide uh, hide the stuff that looks unnatural and the pair yeah, and that, holes are tiny like those are and those you did like yeah. some really neat like um little neat disguising uh this is I can show this, this doesn't actually have a drill this is have a drill. Yeah. Mm, no this one doesn't have a drill but i can show where it is like this has there's a paired paired peg hole in that little crack and in that little crack so there's like so when those are drilled, they'll be pretty, uh, they'll be pretty hidden. Like, yeah. This actually kind of uh, plays into Sly Flourish's question, which is, how do you, more or less, how do you balance beautiful details versus the need for modularity or something that can be used in multiple situations? Um, to some extent, sometimes we can take the small details and and use them to augment the modularity by hiding holes. You know, if if something was just 
a crudely sculpted squared off rock with an obvious hole in it you know that would be less appealing than taking details in in the strata in you know small plants changes in the way the rock is cracked and use that to actually make it more modular by adding holes that you don't really notice and we also um, i mean definitely yeah. we kind of do like a i feel like there's a balance of like 50 to 75 percent kind of bread and butter pieces and then mm -hmm. the rest are like the flashier like you know so we really star. yeah the purple star pieces right you make we have ones that are purple star that are like this is like a unique one like you can kind of go nuts on but like you know this rock or something is mm -hmm. wonderfully generic rock but it's beautiful and it works everywhere and you know so we have we have three three things like this for every like you know kind of crazy specific just stone or whatever so there's a balance yeah so not everything and has to do everything yeah like this rock yeah. basically just needs to be a good all-around utility piece it doesn't have to be super flashy like its job is to be a rock yeah and and that's definitely something you do look at sculpting it you you put something in sometimes you come up with something that's really cool but you're like oh that thing is gonna kind of jump out if we see it too often that skeleton in the corner or whatever let's not have it there let's let's hide it more so you know people will be more surprised when they see it and so that you'll never notice four of them on the table at once but when you're looking around the piece you're like oh that's a cool thing there well there's um, also and, and so that mm -hmm. there's also some neat ones you do like this like so this is mm -hmm. um you what? can you hold it more uh, toward yeah so so higher? this con cave oh here turn this so the concave right has this very kind of distinct little perch sticking mm -hmm. out which looks awesome and it's it's not killer if you put two um can you get a can you frame that up right if you put two in a row it's not killer because it's asymmetrical like it's not right in the center so it breaks it up but then right. we also made it small enough so that you could put like the little perch on one of them and suddenly that breaks up the lines and you don't see the repetition um, as much by like, you know, adding a couple of little, you know, decorative piece can break it up really quickly uh, and then they don't feel uh, as repetitive. Yeah, definitely. Because it's, it's, it's sometimes it's the little jut out is what the eye sees first. So even if the, the main clip face, if you look carefully, is is repeating, seeing is that that yeah. bump on the one and not on the other one exactly um, it's so yeah. Yeah. um definitely like being aware of symmetry and usually kind of avoiding it on uh, say say you're uh, i'm composing a forest floor and i'm figuring where the plants are going to go i don't want to set something up so you you notice a perfect triangle between the relationship between yep. two things and then you'll see it repeated um so or yeah you want stuff off just, center so like if you rotate yeah. If you rotate the six by six, it it changes the way it looks a lot because uh, yeah. because things are nothing is like sort of centered or perfectly in things, so it really feels very different. And also thinking about how if you put two of them next to each other, if you have a piece on one part and the other part that'll work together to create something different, rather than just being the same piece twice, you know they'll they'll actually work a as a unit if it's oriented a certain way so you know you you have something that becomes from a dirt it's patch to become a trail or a small rock to a bigger rock formation that kind of thing puddles together yeah <clears throat> so um yeah that's um yeah. it's fun these these challenges like we oh, have the best yeah like we we have the best job like trying to find oh yeah, clever yeah. creative ways to make wonder <laughs> it's like it's the best like <laughs> What more could you want? Yeah. Yeah. What else you got in your bag of tricks? Should we do two more um, questions and then switch over to uh, to sculpting. showing the, some new teaser, yeah. some reveal, reveling and reveals? I mean, I actually only have one more on my pre-gathered list, so, and I think it segues nicely into the piece. Actually. So let's do let's do one. Um, so we'll do one uh, one viewer question. And then yeah, take your your the, segue the, question. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Is there any any news from the north, Mace? Uh, Denth would like to know if you could grab a water terrain tray and throw it under the two pieces, then put a waterfall on top. Put it under what pieces? Uh, the two waterfall pieces. And then put what on top? 
Uh, I think he, when he says those two pieces, he want, means the ones that you were just showing. The, the and then waterfall forest? on top. Wait, what? I don't uh, know. He said those two pieces. <laughs> the convex. Maybe the, maybe yeah. The I mean concave. Um. Two concaves. I'm assuming the escarpments. Okay, it's gonna be too wide for a single water tray, but I'll get two. All right. So, is there another one that? Uh, There's one specifically for Eli. Ooh, hit it! Hit it! What's your favorite right. food? <laughs> What's my favorite food? Yep, yeah. silly, uh, funny... slick Willie Q would like to know. That's okay. Um. Hmm. Willie Q. I mean, that's actually it. Kind of depends on the day. <laughs> What is it today? Uh, I mean, if you just like asked me that, you just like surprised me, and I didn't have time to think about it, I might just say pizza. I guess. I mean, that's a cheap um, answer. This time of year, fresh. There's a lot of fresh stuff out of the garden. Like I'm eating fresh cherry tomatoes, um, just harvested, um, and these cool purple carrots. I love you know oh, anything right out of the garden. Uh, fresh, fresh blueberries. You know, like again, I live in Vermont partly because it's a you know wonderful place to just eat the landscape <laughs> <laughs> we don't uh, recommend this in wildlands <laughs> homemade blueberry ice cream that's mm. right up there um uh my wife's uh assorted pies your wives my wife's <laughs> my pies. wives no, she, she's laughing in the background <laughs> all right we learn a little bit about you every time you like <laughs> <laughs> heard that. <laughs> anyway, yeah. No, they are going to give you. Yes. That's what I meant to say. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's hope the directional mic is not picking up all the things Eve is saying. In the back. <laughs> you pan over a little. Uh, next question. Uh, <laughs> next question of how many wives? <laughs> I, I lost count. I lost count. <laughs> Right, was this oh, here's a here's just a fun little thing uh, that I, I don't know this um, this mug I've been drinking my tea out of. This is one of my yeah, early sculpts yeah, from when I was yeah. probably about twelve, uh, when I was planning maybe Please maybe to become that. an entomologist. So I did a design of a like a stag beetle on it. But I my mother was a, a, a ceramics teacher. She was an art teacher for a while. She did ceramics in college. My parents met at art school. And um, so I have a couple mugs that I made back, yeah, when I was probably 12 or so. This is another one. Uh, <laughs> a giant smiley, smiley face. face. <laughs> yeah, this, this I gave as a gift to my grandmother many years ago. Unfortunately, she's passed away, so it's come back to me. But, um, yeah. <laughs> Anyways. Wait, she uh, re-gifted it to you? She died? Uh, I guess, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so, let, was, so let's take your uh, okay. let's take your segue question and segue. Okay. Segui. So, um, well, Rogue Jedi asked, "What pieces presented a unique challenge, whether creative or technical?" Um, and I would say this new thing I'm working on is is definitely kind of a fun one that way, um, for various reasons, um, which I can illustrate when I show it. Um, mm. So should should we give a bit of background as to what this is? Yes. Um, yes. Please? Let's let's go nuts. Okay. I mean, a tater tot. So, um, <laughs> they, <laughs> uh, we talked about um, creating a few uh, <coughs> interesting sort of special edition resin pieces, um, like we did last time with the uh, Dread Portal and the Hellgate for Hellscape. Um, and so, so the um, reasoning the reasoning is so we're so far we've broken all our records with this Kickstarter. And assuming all goes well, we're gonna continue to break all our records and have probably potentially the best finish we've ever had. And so one of the things we still have to manage the scope of the Kickstarter both for in, having an on time delivery, um and uh our factory is just you know uh, coronavirus has, has slowed everything down so like there's only so much like we can't we can't throw 250 sculpts at them again like it's just not going to happen um so but one of the things we can do is we can make a few resin pieces it takes much less resources to make a resin piece so i really like we did the the two resin pieces uh in hellscape you did that that dread portal 
um, that we remastered the Hellscape Gate and Michelle carved a new uh, drawbridge for it. And it's really, I really like rewarding the people that are here for the Kickstarter and be like, hey, here's a thing that, you know, to show like a cool memento that only you guys can get. It's limited edition. We're only going to do it in this Kickstarter. This is a thing that you guys can get that, you know, you've enabled us. All this support and backing has enabled us to make these cool art pieces. And you guys are the only ones that are able to get it. And it seems like a really neat way to say thank you and do, you know, create something that wouldn't exist otherwise. And then only the backers get to get it so it's like and it's a chance to you know for the the team to show off and just do some uh do some donuts do a victory lap artistic victory lap <laughs> so so uh eli is revving his engine for an artistic victory lap yeah yeah so i you know i was just kind of thinking about this um and thinking well it would be good to do something that is very much a wildlands thing uh because we're not sure when we'll be revisiting that and I love doing stuff that's you know full of interesting natural forms and we had talked about wanting to do you know a portal to the Feywild a portal to the Shadowfell um, some Shadow way crossing. to cross over yeah and um, so I I kind of played Nate a bit messing around with uh, just kind of creating my own mocks in clay of this concept I had and essentially it was of a, a portal piece that would be uh, multi-part um, just a really interesting sculptural crag uh, with trees with covered with interesting um, plants um, that could be configured in a few different ways. So um, but your directive, the like, directive was he got to do something you're super excited about. That was like, right. Yeah. The thing is yeah. passionate. And this is like, yeah. <laughs> that's so, an Eli's yeah, eyes. Yeah. And I was just kind of, kind of mulling this over for, for uh, several days. And, um, and then I put this thing together and, um, so far we, we like the idea. It's still very much a work in progress, but and this uh, is, essentially, this is brave. Mm -hmm. Like you're showing, you're showing like, just like raw hunks of clay basically this is like yes you know yes. people are gonna have to use their imaginations and, here because this is like this is kind of what this is also one of the reasons we started this twitch channel right is to show we can show people the process like they just see this finest thing but this is like yeah. hey this is like <laughs> eli with some like coat hangers and some clay just sort of like <laughs> slumped a thing up there and you, yeah. you look at it now and you might go what is this gonna be and then trust me in six weeks when you see this thing in the pledge manager you because you go, your heads are gonna explode yeah yeah so maybe i'll start by showing just the original uh thing yeah. i did just with some some kind of plastilina the, clay the coat hangers just clay. these <laughs> these kind of ugly gray lumps um and because it was actually simpler to sketch it in clay rather than uh with pen and paper because i wanted to be sure of the geometry and i wanted to be able to to fit it together so essentially you've got one side you've got another side they fit together such that you have an interesting crag with you know natural stairs working their way up You've got this hole in the top, uh, which maybe you can see me peering through, um, so that this can fit over um, light sources um, and create, you know, a sort of magical upwelling of light. Um, but it can also pull apart and create an archway, so you can walk through between these points and travel from one realm into the other. And the idea is I would also create an, an energy vortex to live in that space um, or to be used for any sort of spell portal effect. Um, and so um, that was uh, kind of the rough idea. And now um, here's a bit further along. Here is the oh, and it also, you know, kind it of also, monster clay. You can like kind of open them up and line them up as like a little kind of like cavey outcome oh, yeah, yeah, thing. Yeah. So, and there's like a little so ruins, can, a little ruins yeah. sidecar that can decorate them up and. Yeah. So here again, you can see, you know, there's kind of the hole in the top, or you can you can open it out like so and have just kind of a really nice backdrop, um, that would hold, uh, you know, if you could put statuary in there, you could put some kind of a treasure, you could just use it as a kind of cul-de-sac, you know, that someone gets trapped with their back against the wall and things coming after them, but it's, maybe it's, it's, it's protected by some kind of magical... It's exactly essence. the place where drama happens, right? There is, like, yes. there's something is happening there, right? This is the this is a place, this is, like, a showpiece that you put down, and it's like, okay, things are afoot. Like, there is, you know, where things are about Each to get wild. Each piece on its own 
is is quite interesting and could be used you know they could be miles apart from each other they don't need to be together um the there's i also have a kind of a little um this is a stand-in for a piece of ruins which fits neatly um on this corner of this one among other things um there's a few places it fits it fits on and the on this one the idea was well. the ruins could add a cool piece of interest, but you could remove them. If you wanted it to be relatively generic, you could remove it, but it was also integrated, so it could give you this extra, like, yeah. extra Yeah, so it can either be wholly natural, yeah. or it can be, you know, definitely something marked by the Kalantiri or the Fey or whoever it might be. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, yeah, or, you know, you can, you can arrange these so they're kind of like one is... Uh, backed up against the next and you have this cool crag with spaces to leap or, or you know you could you can put your bridge between them and have you know have a, a nifty space there and like some trees to climb on or swing off of um, inside the, the whole like this one is kind of a, a shelf like place that might hold your treasure your MacGuffin your sacred whatever you need to you need to get um, maybe you have to climb down in the hole together or maybe it's just sitting there exposed and maybe it's a trap did you tell them the um, life and death thing? The other, yes. The other okay. thing um, I was thinking is that conceptually, this is like the threshold of worlds. So one half of it is very much alive. The other half is kind of dead and sinister. So one of the trees is alive. One ha one is dead. When it's when it's kind of intertwined like this, um, there'll be enough overlap among the among the uh, the plant life on both sides that it feels like a coherent piece. But definitely one side is sort of dead and withered and the other side is more alive it's a yin yang um, the idea being that you know maybe if you're if you're on the prime material plane you're not sure if this is going to somewhere that's safe and vibrant you know, are you in the Feywild or is that that dead tree a sign that maybe something sinister is on the far side if you came across this in the Feywild that dead tree is maybe a clue you're headed to the Shadowfell if you found this in the Shadowfell th there's a living tree what does that mean that means it's, that's a way it's out. a hope so, well, you could also just yeah. take the dead, and, dead side. You could take the dead side and like the slink root and the black rod, sort of make it just like all shadow felly. Or you could take the live side and put a quildron up against it or whatever, and it becomes this thing. And like, and yeah. I'm going to make the the, the negative space on both of these uh, match on both sides. So if you happen to have two of these, you could combine two of the dead ones or two of the living ones to have a, like an, an especially dead and creepy one or an especially vibrant uh fey one and because they'll be twisted by um you know 180 degrees i mean and obviously it's a it's a magical place some sort of weird symmetry will feel like it belongs there and we'll just you know we'll seem cool yeah so um so yeah so and what, what if you get on. three <laughs> what if you get three eli what do we do <laughs> If you get three, uh, well, I'm sure. <laughs> you know, if you put them corner to corner to corner, uh, I think that would work. a giant circle. <laughs> yeah, May, the living ones they might need a little more space, but that's okay because you're probably gonna want to put some shrubberies in there. Okay, the now dead how ones, about I four? Think... How about four? What do we do if we get four? Billy <laughs> Ah, uh, but anyhow, I mean, by all means, get four. Yeah, because then you, know, you have. You have Pre-build the Shadowfell layout, and then the the Feywild layout, and then the real world layout, and then you yeah. can just you don't have to transfer <laughs> the sculpt from one. <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> um, yeah. So as you can see, I've been thinking about all the fun stuff you can do with this, and it's just been it's just been a blast. And hopefully, um, that will be something some of you will get excited about. I, the, another thought about this is it's it's in a way a bit of a companion piece to the the Spirit Tree from yeah. the original Dread Hollow which was one of my favorite things to sculpt there, but just something that's maybe a little more versatile than that, um, you know, because of the, all the different ways you can configure it. It's got definitely a lot of playable space on it. Um, you know, the idea of it being either a small kind of dodgy hole in the ground or this, this big archway that you can adjust the size of. So you, if you want a portal that like a dragon can literally come through, that will work with this, you know. Um, and I, I just like the idea of portals out in the wilderness not being a formal arch thing but just a shape where you look at it certainly like, hey that looks like a doorway because that's often how it is in mythology and so well, it's on the and classic you fake crossing is yeah, yeah you go under the wrong yeah. bow and like you find yourself a thing or you yeah 
Yeah, yeah. You thought you were just going through through the bushes or under a root, and then suddenly the sky is a different color and something's going on. And yeah, so so a more subtle a more subtle portal. Um, yeah. Anyhow. Yeah, so and oh, and the trees awesome. are definitely kind of based on the quilt of the tree. You know, like it's ancient giant examples ancient. of that one, you know, old and twisted. So they all have they have, you know, kind of multiple trunks, um, or, or you know, kind of root into trunk uh, sections, and some of these kind of weird spiky bits sticking up. Which just make the composition more interesting and also, you know, add to that slightly fantastical feel. Um, so, yeah, that is um, that's what I've been working on the past couple of days. So, um, so do you want to uh, do you want to work a little bit on it live? I mean, I can. Yeah, I'm. I'm not sure. Again, we'll have to see how well the camera read. will show it. We do. Um, oh wait, we have some. We have some photos. Yes. And I yeah, I sent some photos uh, to. To uh, slack them into. Yeah, we got them. We'll put the them up right now. So first, we're so, showing the tree of um, life. This is the the life side. This is the life side of the sculpt. <clears throat> I can just hey, slide the camera. There's, there's hey, almost Stefano. no you know, detail on it yet. Um, so it's you know it's a, it's lumps of clay, but. You get a sense of the the composition, at least, hopefully, um, from the photos. And uh, well, you know what? I'm the people that don't just go nuts with mm -hmm. the people that don't get it will mm -hmm. once when they then see it, it'll you know be that cool thing. Yeah, it's like I, I was actually thinking it could be kind of fun. Like I could I could sort of post some progress pictures yeah. on Instagram or yeah, whatever. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, people can watch it. Come the along. Discord. Um, and, yeah. So yeah. Stefan is so, going to uh, yeah, so Stefan's going to sculpt the piece for the pledge manager too. Cool. Should be exciting, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Mm. You can have dueling uh, dueling photos. Let's see. Duel yeah. the fates. Uh, <laughs> it, would it be all right to put these photos up on the uh, Discord and forums as a? Uh... Can uh, Can Chris put these on Discord? Um. Yeah, I guess. Sure. All right. Cool. So I'll back I'll back them up there after the stream. Uh, well, that's and that's you know that's a sign of how much Eli loves you guys that he's willing to put up a rough work in progress piece that you know that it's to to many would just look like a big old lump of clay, but to Eli is like he's he's going journeying to the Feywild and he looks at that he's like he's in another world. I see the the Feywild and the clay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. and. If anyone actually anyone who's on the on the chat right now has any particular suggestions, no guarantees, but if there's like a particular sort of plant or creature or something that would be cool to put on here, um, send me some ideas. Maybe I'll maybe I'll sneak a few of them in. Um, yeah, it's like like we yeah. did with the uh, the stepped uh, the step stump crab. Yeah, that Luna moth. Yeah, and then I think did someone suggest the the vine or whatever that was in on the. Uh, the landing, you were like doing something. You're like, um, and they're like, yeah, yeah put some plants, put some fern, plants. Put yeah. In there. yeah, yeah, I put a fern in. Someone wanted a fern. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and there'll definitely be some ferns and vines on this. Um, I was talking. My wife is a, a botanist and a floral designer and has all kinds of cool ideas about plants. And she was suggesting some for the kind of the death side, um, datura, which is sort of also called jimson weed or has various other like devil's trumpet. It's it's kind of a creepy poisonous. Yeah, uh, that might be nestled she among made, the dead. Uh, she made a really beautiful dried flower wreath for. Uh, mm. I had a get one for uh, for Mother's Day for my wife, and it was like it was made by elves. So if anybody out there is looking for a good present for their wife for Mother's Day or a birthday or whatever, look up uh, look up Eva Alexander because she makes this beautiful. Literally, it looked like Watson this crafted Bow. by elves. Yeah, and she, well, she will ship them around the country. So. Can't ship them out of the U.S., but if you're in the U.S., and the dahlias, uh, <laughs> one of them has uh, started to sprout. My, my, I got some dahlias from my mom. That you guys uh, kept the, nice, in the winter nice. in your basement or whatever, right? And, yep. Yeah. Yep. They live in the root cellar of winter. Yeah. Amazing. So we're getting a lot of uh, requests uh, already. A lot of people want to see like a kind of duality thing of uh, so, like one on the tree of life, one on the tree of death, and they kind of reflect each other. Uh, so like a crow on one side and like a a crow on like the death side and like a butterfly on the other or something like that. Mm. Or uh, mm -hmm. let's see. 
Uh, somebody wants to say unicorn skull. A unicorn skull. Uh, <laughs> Hydrangeas, a rose versus thorns. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, people seem to be really into the idea of doing a kind of duality thing. Oh, you should put a little. Uh, you should put some nettle gorse on, uh, on there. Yeah. Did you notice the nettle gorse I put in the wyvern nest? Yeah. There's a couple nettle. Yeah, gorse and it's painted. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Aaron yeah. painted it up to uh, yeah. match the nettle gorse. Yeah. I love it. Well, There's also you... like a dynamic skull and so on. But but um yeah. Anytime so, you can uh, lift the. You know, you I was know, actually reference the other things that are already there. It just makes the whole world cohesive. Yeah, I was I was actually toying with the idea of doing something a bit like those creepy Renaissance paintings. Like I think was that Holbein that did the one where they're like, if you look at it from a certain angle, you see a skull, mm. you know, but not head on. Like it's not, it's it's. I might try and put something like that in there, where it's not like it's not an actual skull. It's just the rock. Yep. If you view it from a certain angle, um, you that die. might be kind of fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're gonna lose Make backers. Your investigation check twenty. I see. It. All right, you die. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Um, so. Um, any other cool? Suggestions? Yeah. So I mean, I don't know if there's any point in like tinkering with this on screen, or if Chris's photos well, are a better your, approach. To your just... internet is not so great. I think no one's gonna mm. be able to see anything. I've been cycling right. through the photos as a kind of slideshow yeah. to show everybody the details. Okay, the I, what consensus I is that I you look undead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the lighting. I mean, well, it's just my, like this white desk, blur. It's, it's good yeah. for seeing what I'm doing. It's not so good for showing my face to the world. I Ooh. guess. This is um, this. This is a really cool oh, idea. <laughs> oh, what's the good? Uh, one? So yeah. you've got thorns on one side, and the vine kind of wraps around. And if you connect it to the other side, the 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 vines continue and like sprout up into like a rose on the other With side. Flowers or roses on the other side. Oh, that's a the cool. pieces together. Like a continuous, the plant connects yeah. from one to the other. If you line them up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was definitely planning on doing something probably with roses anyways. I don't know. I tend to think of fae things. I had so many of the classic fairy tales, you know, from childhood. Um, I don't know how many how many people out there, I wonder, read the, like, the blue fairy book and the red fairy book and all those. Yeah. Uh, Andrew- yeah. Um, some of those great illustrations of the roses climbing up the, the you know, the walls of towers and things. Um, there's already some of that on, like, the quildren and the rowan tree, some of those flowering vines. Um, but... Um, yeah, yeah. That's, that's some of my favorite. The uh, all the little flowers on the Rowan, like it's such a beautiful. Mm-hmm. Like it's just the just the touches we need in the wildlands. This little yeah, beautiful color of a. Uh, it's got mistletoe, which oh, properly oh is God, normally too. like on oak trees and stuff. But but it just like it's a magical plant. It, and this is a this is a fey Rowan, so it gets mistletoe. Yeah, uh, you know some melia ads that just like and, you know kind of stuff from all over the world but like at the fey wild has everything you know it's got it's squared got, uh, yeah just such perfusion of, of of a life and yeah all the magical plants you know, so um yeah but yeah definitely uh, definitely there'll be some interesting stuff going on with some vines um some flowering vines some some creatures um uh yeah, little critters. Um, and if yeah, if anyone else has any any other particularly interesting ideas, sling them along. Uh, I'll I'll do what I can. Like I said, um, uh, well, it's all I'm grist. Sure be, it's uh, like you, mm. it's just grist yeah, for the creative all, mill. You just throw it in there, and you don't know it'll sit in the hopper, and sometimes yeah. it makes it out, and sometimes it doesn't. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just. I mean, part of it's just gonna depend on like what creatures I will particularly have fun creating and maybe i haven't done before i've done a lot of interesting insects i love doing insects um, yeah uh, i've done a fair amount of snakes and reptiles um uh, the odd rabbit <laughs> yeah i'd like rodent and have curled up underground you know uh, there's a few of those some crayfish this one we'll see yeah might do a few bones i'll keep them i'll, I'll keep any bone type stuff kind of subtle i think i don't want it to be too in your face even if it is like the dead death side it's maybe an evil side but it's maybe just death and not evil death but just you know standard um, issue nature death yeah yeah there's you know it's part of the cycle uh what do you think about a small snake wrapped around a root of the tree kind of linked to the world tree mythology and the earth serpent hmm. it's not a bad idea yeah That's cool 
That's what I mean. I, like I have done. There have there are a lot of snakes already in our pieces, but I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I like snakes. Uh, a ferret. Uh, a ferret would be cute. A ferret. Uh, <laughs> Sisney of Boy. Yeah. Have we done a ferret yet? I don't think so. Mm-hmm. No. Uh, you haven't actually done a whole lot of mammals. Uh, I've done a, a rabbit or two, some underground things. Nina did the curled up little fox. fox. Uh, how, how about on the life side, we get a quokka? A what? A quokka. What's a quokka? <laughs> it's 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 the happiest looking Australian mammal in existence. A quokka? A quokka. Yeah, they're funny little yeah quokkas. Yeah. How do you spell quokka? Q U O K K A. Look it up. It's amazing. O-K-K-A. It'll it'll make your night if you see a quokka. Yeah, so Why don't about, I do so a rabbit eared bandicoot? Yeah. <laughs> Crash. <laughs> Quaka. Huh. A giant platypus. Um, yeah. And then Guantabo. No, we're getting silly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, go back to the dead unicorn. That's a good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, that's going to yeah. be uh, it's gonna be a really cool piece, Sila. Very, uh, really excited would, to yeah. see where it goes. Excited about it. Hopefully, hopefully others will also be, and uh, we'll see. We'll see where it ends up in in a few weeks. Um, well, what's so this n- will probably be. Um, I mean, by all means, like pledge for it now, <laughs> but it will probably be appearing in the pledge manager. One hundred percent. Will we? Yeah, will yeah. we... Not to the pledge manager. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Well, and what's cool is yeah. this is like we've actually we're ahead. Usually at this point, you're still frantically sculpting like a final thing, but we're. But partially because we have a hard limit, uh, but now it's it's nice yeah. to be able to get a jump on doing something cool for the pledge manager, so you have some time to really do it upright, uh, let it breathe, and yeah, mold, cast, paint it, like so we don't have to paint the master like we've done many a time. Yeah, 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 um, yeah, and you don't want to paint the the clay master especially. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's uh, not good. So yeah. <laughs> we've got we've got some people wondering. Obviously, this is a little ahead of time. They're wondering if there is an estimated dollar amount that they can put into the Kickstarter so that it can go towards stretch goals before it. Uh... I have no idea what it's going to cost. <laughs> I, I I I'm going to guess. Uh, this won't be the untamed bucks. pledge, right? This is going to be a pledge manager. Only. Pledge manager only. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Limited yeah. edition only to the Kickstarter. We won't ever make another. So we it'll be one run, and that's it. Uh, just a cool collectible art piece that you get, and you know, you this is your chance to buy it. You can buy, you know, like you said, you buy four of them so you can build another whatever. Um, or or save part. three and sell one on eBay for yeah. six hundred bucks in two years. <laughs> yeah, is, it, is, is this going to be resin? Uh, it's going to be a resin. It's it's not going to be dormant. It's going to be a resin limited edition collector's piece. Um, and I think it'll only be hand painted. I don't think we sell it unpainted. We didn't do the. Uh, yeah, so it'll be painted only resin showpiece. It's probably going to be two fifty or three hundred because it's two pieces. Like if the dread with the size of it and how complicated like yeah, the, the trees are going to be hundred. So it's going to be it's probably two fifty or three hundred. Yeah, I mean the dread yeah. portal had the side obelisks yep. and the chains and the little thing, but this is definitely more mass, way more complicated. Uh, might yeah. even do might even do a couple little ruins to go on it because yeah. why not? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> It's got uh, bonkers. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's it's like you said, it's the artistic victory lap, right? At this point, you're just like doing donuts in the middle of the uh, the racetrack, <laughs> shooting, yeah. shooting out the windows. Whee! Uh, we also there was also a couple questions about the runes piece that we're asking that what? was included in it. Is Whatever that going to be? Yeah, uh, they want to know like, is that going to be part of the sculpture? Is that something that you can take and like use separately? You can take it and use separately. Cool. Is yeah. it, and is, is it going to be, be separate? Yeah, and it's yeah. it's going to be made up to match with the other runes pieces. Yeah, we all in the Kalantiri style. Yeah, it'll be yep. in that same same family. Uh, yeah. Yep. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I was kind of looking at it, sort of being roughly kind of like half of the arch, and then maybe do a mirror image one, and it could you know, it could be a little shrine somewhere. It could be attached to your other ruins somehow, um, or it could just be a way marker or something by yep. the same yep. culture, whoever they may be. They're dead now. They're, they messed with the wrong unicorn, I guess. Yeah. Cool. Well, we should uh, let's let's wrap it up, so that I can get a good night's sleep and get ready for the game tomorrow. And um, yeah, well, unless there's any other uh, hot tickets in the in the chat that we need to answer 
Uh, I think that was everything regarding the piece. A everybody's responding very, very positively to it. Uh, a lot of people are well, good. very excited yeah. about it. Good. Uh, some people asking I mean, us to let save me know the. If there's something you utterly hate, and I'll <laughs> consider why you hate it. I guess. Um, but it looks like people hate that the uh, that the gloom gorger is gone. Seems they hate the gloom gorger is missing. Yeah. That I can't fix. But you can put a dead <laughs> gloom gorger in there. <laughs> there you go. Put, yeah. put, put, put a, a wilted one. Kind of... <laughs> and cat sails. <laughs> Everybody just wants the old sculpts back. Oh well. Mm. Cool. Someday. Yeah. All right, well, Eli, thanks for uh, thanks for hopping on the air and uh, oh, yeah. showing well, thank off you, Nate. Thanks. work in progress. Everybody, Smace, thank Chris. you, backers, for coming yeah. along and making the journey worth worth the effort and giving us good questions and um, you know poking poking holes and things that need some holes poked in them. And uh, you know, just. It's just a fun. I, I I just keep marveling at it. The process of being able to show stuff, get some feedback, listen to what people want, adjust, make some more bits, roll out some stuff, show things that aren't quite there yet, but they know that it'll get there. Like it's it's uh, it's pretty special. Yeah. We're I really I enjoy this uh, this process and it's exciting that we get to yeah. do it with all these kids. Mm. Yes, we're very lucky and we do appreciate it um, <sighs> endlessly. Very much. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, on that note, uh, this is day seventeen. We're <laughs> signing off. <laughs> yeah. and, not that we're counting. Yeah. We, uh, and we'll uh, <laughs> see you guys tomorrow, and uh, the day after that, and the day after that, and seven more days after that, and then we're off. Okay. So, All right. Good night, thanks everybody. Thanks for tuning in. See good night. Good night. Have a good one. <laughs>